Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be mixing greys but before I actually mix greys in my little Bockingford pad that I have underneath I thought I'd, I'd explain a little bit about how I approach mixing greys. So the theory behind mixing greys says that in order to be successful you have to mix the three primary colours red, blue and yellow. All three need to be in, to, in your mix for it to be successful. Okay? And all three need to be in the mix in equal amounts. This is a little tricky when we're trying to mix watercolours because most colours are not true primaries. They usually lean towards one colour or another. For example, ultramarine blue, which is kind of a staple in most artists' palettes, is a warm blue and it leads towards violet or red. Um, so if, for example, you mix it with an orange that leans towards red too, you're going to most likely get a violet colour. However, if you mix it with an orange leaning towards yellow, it will produce a grey. I just wanted to put in a little trick that I used to use when I was choosing colours to mix greys, to remember what colours to mix. So if I had a blue, for instance, and I wanted to mix it with another colour to make a grey, I would try to remember what the other two primaries were, just right in the beginning of when I was trying to do colour of watercolours. And I would say, okay, what does red and yellow do? Those do orange. So it is more most likely, in theory, that the blue I have is going to make a grey with, if I mix it with an orange. If I mix, for instance, if I had a yellow and I wanted to mix it and make a grey, I would remember what the other two primaries were and what they made together. These make a purple. So yellow and purple. And the final one, red, I would think what does blue and yellow make? That is green. So I would mix it with a green. So basically if you want to mix a grey using only two colours, you need the two colours to include all the three primaries. And if you want a truly neutral grey, they're going to have to kind of have the same amount of primaries in the mix. And I am back with my little swatch card. Um, and now, after um, my little colour theory ramble, I'll get to mixing the actual colours. So what I've done here is that I've written the names and the um, pigment numbers of the colours that I'm going to mix and I'm going to swatch those first and then I'm going to swatch the mix they create so you can get an idea of what's happening. Um, first off I'm going to use ultramarine blue which is this I believe. I'm using the Zeki but any ultramarine should do. Ultramarine blue is PB29. It is a blue that, um, as I said before, leans towards violet. So let's put that there. So a little swatch. That is a beautiful ultramarine. Nice violet hued ultramarine. And I'm going to mix it with raw sienna. Raw sienna is an earth colour. Um, a little disclaimer here. I actually think of browns and earths as mostly oranges and reds. So some um, earths are orange, some earths are red usually. There are, all, you know, there are most likely um, loads of exceptions, but for me, when I approach 
a earth color i th i you know the first thing i wonder is where it leans towards um and i this raw sienna if i can find it on my palette there we go is a earth color like a that is a little bit orange but leans towards yellow so i've got my ultramarine blue which leans towards violet and i've got my raw sienna that leans towards yellow so i'm going to mix those two together hopefully in equal amounts really giving it a good mix you can see it on the palette that it's being neutralized the one is neutralizing the other and hopefully we'll end up with a non-staining kind of neutral grey. I say non-staining because usually in my experience ultramarines aren't very staining and raw sienna is definitely not a staining colour so that they are going to produce a colour that is non-staining obviously. There we go. So that's our first grey. Next up, we have Cerulean Blue, which is PB36. And I'm going to mix it with Quinacridone Burnt Orange, which is PO48. So I'm going to yeah, locate my Cerulean on my palette. Cerulean, Cerulean leans usually towards like a, a green, a yellow. So it's more of a cool blue. But sometimes I've found some Ceruleans that are like middle of the road that are almost not leaning towards anything. Um, Quinacridone Burnt Orange, which is PO48 locate it on my palette there we go it's a beautiful beautiful earthy orange that leans towards red so i'm going to mix those two i'm going to mix cerulean blue and quinacridone burnt orange and see what they produce We go with the brown. We're going to need more blue. And a little bit more blue. And that's too much blue. I think, maybe, give it a good mix. It's a nice grey though. Okay, I'm going to go with it. Oh, that is a nice grey. It's a little bit leaning towards blue, but that's fine. Add a bit more water. Oh dear. I've splattered over there. I need a piece of paper to quickly wipe that up. And this should produce a granulating colour because cerulean granulates. Oh, okay. And there's going to be a little bit of separation, which is already happening here. Okay, so next I'm going to use, I'm going to mix with cobalt turquoise light, which is PG50. And I'm going to 
mix it with Pirol Orange, which is PO73. So Cobalt Turquoise Light. I love that colour. So pretty. And Pirol Orange, which I'm the Pearl Orange I'm using is Windsor Orange Red Shade. And I'm going to mix those two. That's going to need a whole lot more blue. Some colours have a lot more tinting strength than others. So you need to be um, putting a lot more colour in of one colour than the other. I like that. I'm going to go with that. Oh, that's pretty. That's a pretty grey. So much separation going on here because of the granulation of the cerulean. And this should granulate a little bit as well because of the cobalt. Sure, I don't think Pirol is a granulating colour. Pirol orange. There we go. Now I'm going to introduce a phthalo colour. Um, one of the reasons I bought phthalos was to mix greys. Oops, sorry. Um, I'm going to use PG7, which is this Holbein um, Viridian Hue. Let me put some here. And I'm going to mix it with quinacridone coral, which is one of my favourite, as, as I've said many times, <laughs> one of my favourite reds. So, I'm going to just put the viridian here. Well, it's not viridian, it's um, phthalo green blue shade. And um, quinacridone coral, which is easy to locate on my palette because I use it a lot. Um, such a pretty colour, love that colour. I do love my warm reds, warm pinks rather. Oh, wonky, wonky circle. Okay. So I'm going to mix the viridian. Or oh, I keep saying viridian. It isn't a true viridian. It's a viridian hue. With my quinacridone coral. That should be okay. Yeah, they have completely neutralized each other. <laughs> there we go. Add a little bit more water. such a lovely warm day today here in the mountains. I've actually opened the windows because, to get some fresh air in because it is such a lovely warm and sunny day. Perfect for creating a video. So uh, now I'm going to go to Bamboo Green which is a PG36 and this is 
a phthalo green yellow shade. And I will be mixing it with permanent rose, which is a Windsor and Newton colour. By the way, I will be listing all the colours with links underneath. So um, if I forget to say something, please just have a look underneath and the link will be there with the colour that I've missed mentioning. And okay, so where is this? No, that's Queen Red. I'm looking for permanent rose, permanent rose. I had it here a second ago. Oh, there we go, found it. There we go. This is a lovely color, PV19. This is a Windsor and Newton permanent rose. So a warmish green and a coolish red. They should neutralize each other. See what happens. Yeah, we're going to need a bit more green. Oh, we've got too much green, a little bit more red. Oh, this is going to be a tricky one. We're going to have to add a little bit more green. Not too much. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Transparent grey. As both colours are transparent, they're going to produce a transparent grey. Really hope this information is helping. Um, I uh, I kind of, when you work with watercolours for so long, you kind of forget how you got to your end result because you do everything quite intuitively. So I had to go back and think of how to approach mixing grades like as if um, it was my first time. And... It was, it was a strange experience because I do it kind of without thinking. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. So put it into words is a little bit tricky. I'm sorry if I, it's very confusing. If I'm saying things that are very confusing. Not that the material is confusing, but I'm just making things confused by what I'm saying. Oh my goodness, that was such a ramble. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go on to few more adventurous greys now. So I'm going to mix Goethite, which is a D Daniel Smith colour, it's PY43 with ultramarine blue. Now I have here somewhere, I should have, oh yes, in my little pastel box, um, I've got these uh, earth colours that I use. So I'm going to use Goethite, which is quite similar to raw sienna, but you'll see that it produces a grey with difference. And ultramarine blue again. There we go. And 
going to use goethite and mix it with the ultramarine a little bit more don't want too much yeah. not sure it looks quite warm but I'll go with it yeah it's a very warm granulating grey Goethite is a granulating colour, so is ultramarine, so they are going to produce a granulating grey. There we go. Oops, bumping into things. I'm going to switch my jar around. So I've got two jars here. One of my jars of water is quite dirty now. Look at that beautiful granulation that's coming through. That's so lovely. Okay. So I'm going to just clean my palette a little bit. And move on to the next colour, which is Viridian Hue, which is PG7. If I'm not mistaken, this is it. PG7. This is not a Viridian, this is a Viridian Hue. My apologies for calling it Viridian all the time. It is not a Viridian. And um, Moon Glow. A lovely colour by Daniel Smith. Now where is Moon Glow on my palette? There we go. It's right next to the dioxazine. Such a lovely colour. I will be mixing those two. Oh, we're going to need a lot more Moon Glow because the uh, tinting strength of Moon Glow is weak. Compared to the um, tinting strength, I'm going to put lots of Moon Glow in there. The tinting strength of the uh, PG7. Um, okay, so I've got a little bit there. Yeah. This produces a grey that I think is comparable um, to um, Payne's grey, like a transparent version. Moon Glow has PG18, which is um, actually Viridian, the actual Viridian in it, which makes it a bit kind of <laughs> funny. Okay, and it also has PB29 and PR177. Next. I am going to mix Yabapai, which is a natural iron oxide, it doesn't have a pigment number, with cerulean. Now where is my little box? Here we go. Yabapai, another colour by Daniel Smith that I really like. It's, it's kind of like goethite, but it's darker. You'll see what I mean. There we go. And cerulean. This is cerulean um, chromium. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I did pick up a lot of colour there. 
Whoops. This is Soli and Chromium by Daniel Smith, which is PB36. I think there's Cerulean's that are PB35, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so I'm going to mix that Cerulean with the Yavapai. putting a lot of Yavapai because it has a weaker tinting strength than Cerulean does. Um, I'm going to go with the warm, this warm grey here. Yeah, it's nice. You can adjust your greys, you can put a bit bit more cerulean in, you can put less um, cerulean in and make it warmer or cooler. I've actually um, experimented with putting a third colour in as well, um, just to uh, see what happens. And in some cases, the, uh, the grey that res um, results from it is quite interesting. I've had quite a lot of success mixing um, cobalt turquoise light into various greys. Because of the granulation, it produces this kind of um, texture. But there's so many things you could do. This is just but a fraction of the greys that you can produce. You could mix greys all day. <laughs> um, so... Um, So now we're going to mix Pierrot Red. Whoa! That is a bold red. And Perilene Green. Which when I mix greys with, I, it always makes me chuckle because it is a grey. It, is, it isn't a grey. It's a black pigment. It's PBK31. There we go. And I am going to mix those two. And this should produce very flat, dark, almost black colour. Let's put more red and a bit more perylene in there. I can still see so much red in that, that's going to need a bit more green or black. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Give it a good mix and oh, moving my pad. I really want to encourage you to experiment with colours and experiment with colour mixing because it, it is such a joy to um, discover colours, your own colours this way. I'm hoping that um, by showing you the basics of how to mix um, greys, you'll go out and get your watercolor um, palette and your sketchbook and just have your own color adventure um, okay the final one this is going to separate I can see it separating here <laughs> anyway 
But uh, the final one is Quinacridone Burnt Scarlet, which is another one of my favourite colours. Seriously, you could do so many variations of greys just by what you have in your palette. Is such a lovely color and this is another color that um, is a phthalo it's called aqua green when I looked up its pigment number there wasn't one <laughs> it just said phthalo it's a uh, winter and Newton color it's a lovely color it's a staining phthalo That's too much red. Oh, crack red and burn scarlet. I'm gonna go in, add some more. Oh, it's gonna be one of those tricky ones. Okay, so I'm gonna have to be careful with what I add now. Not too much. I think there's a fight for who's gonna win here between the quinacridone scarlet and um, maybe a tad more solo, looking quite brown. There we go. I think that's okay. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to be very patient and just put little drops of one colour and drops of the other too achieve the uh, result you you want but it's all part of a very very enjoyable process when i was um when i when i decided i wanted to do a video about mixing grays i actually did loads loads of spreads of grays <laughs> i was um, so excited to um, be sharing the the joy of mixing colors with you. So I ended up with so many that I got confused in the end, which one, which gray should I choose to show you? But I went with these um, because I think there's like a very wide array of grays here. And also please, please do not, um, um, do not remain with these colors, with these mixes, do your own mixes. You know, you enjoy that this, that feeling of discovery when you're mixing colours. Okay, so we've done all the colours now. I can move this out of the way, side-ish. I'll just move that there, okay. So, yeah, that is basically how I mix greys. You can see there's so many variations. Um, you've got your nice warm grey here and another warm grey. You've got another cool grey here, uh, cool grey. These are really granulating greys. Um, there were so, there were so many um, beautifully granulating colours when I was doing my experiment mixing greys to come up with, with which ones I should show you. Um, <laughs> I just accidentally kind of bumped into colours that I wasn't expecting to separate so um, dramatically. Um, it was it was so much fun and I really, really enjoyed the process leading up to this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it too. I really, really hope that um, I could share some insight that would be helpful to you um, and not muddle the waters even further. Um, 
thank you. I just wanted to thank you so much for being here, for supporting me, for being so patient while I was away. Um, thank you so much. Um, my wish to you is to go off after this video or, you know, during this video, if you haven't already, um, grab your colours and start mixing. Um, I am thinking of making other mixing videos if you're interested, um, like mixing oranges, mixing um, greens, mixing violets. Let me know if you are interested in that kind of video. Um, I'd be more than happy to make them because I love mixing colours. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much again for being here. Um, the awkward little bit at the end which is if you like this video please like it um, if you would like to see more videos from me please subscribe and hit the notification button so that you will be um, alerted when I make a new video and um, what else what else uh, oh I forgot <laughs> completely forgot to uh, say that um, I'm going to have be having a giveaway of the whole bang colors which I will I, I haven't been using the ones that I bought in the pastel set I've made a selection of those colors and I will be doing a giveaway on my Instagram page for you for because that's where I usually do giveaways on my Instagram page so if you would like to take part pop over to my instagram page and leave a comment under the video no under the photo <laughs> of the giveaway um i'll probably be doing that tomorrow so today um i might not get the opportunity but if i do get the opportunity i will do it i am rambling i know um i leave the details underneath my video so that you um you, you i'll write things a bit more co coherently than my ramble anyway thank you thank you so much and i hope to see you all very soon hope to see you next week if all goes well thank you love you guys bye 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 bye